I'm Ina Jaffe from Clean Fuel Connection. <laughs> Gee, thanks. I have my plants here. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna, I was gonna uh, open it up for questions at this point and see if there's some questions for the drivers. And I wanna echo what everyone has said here. First of all, you have the stars here. These are the folks who were the pioneers who went through the early process. And they were extremely tolerant of the things that didn't go right and that took forever to get done and the problems that we had in the industry. The drivers who are coming for the mass market are not gonna be that tolerant. Uh, they're gonna want things to happen quickly and easily. And so I think they have some very le valuable lessons to offer us. Um, so I'd like to open it up for questions and I'm sure they'll be available later. And their contact information is also on your, um, your, in your packet. So Philippe, did you have a question? Over the last uh, 25 years, the entertainment industry has kind of revealed uh, uh, important traits of human nature, such as uh, greed is good and show me the money. And the fact of the matter is that, uh, per a reference earlier, we're going to need to incentivize the private sector in order to really help uh, the deployment of charging stations. So therefore, my question to you is, what would you be willing to pay for a public charge, knowing that electricity at retail cost right now is somewhere between 12 and say 30 cents on the high side a kilowatt hour, um, would you be able to, would you be willing to pay for a half, uh, a ch uh, half a charge, let's say a 15 kilowatt worth of your battery, would you be willing to pay 20 cents? Would you be willing to pay six bucks to get home uh, with, uh, with a public charging station? Well, it's, cu it's curious, that, that may not be the question in the end. Um, the, question, the question may not be how much am I willing to pay because, in fact, my willingness to pay in the public context is going to depend upon the uh, cost of charging at home, assuming, as I think is going to be the case for 80 to 90 percent of the people who get the car first, they're going to be charging at home. So as the cost goes up for public charging, my desire to use it goes down. So I would pay, you know, 50 bucks if I'm 100 miles from home. But I'm certainly not going to plug in uh, 10 minutes from home if I don't absolutely need to, if I'm going to have to pay for it. And there are all kinds of good reasons to, to, to have people charging in public, seeing the cars, experiencing it, in terms of the future, uh, uh, the future promotion of, the, uh, of electric vehicles. So there, it's a complicated question. Yeah, and I, I would say, you know, my own experience too, uh, maybe we'll all say this, you know, I have paid, say, $10 plug in somewhere for a couple hours because I had to pay the parking fee and say a garage when I could have just parked on the street. Um, but I, you know, I really needed that, that electricity at that point in time. The unfortunate thing for the site owners is that's a rare occurrence. You know, it, it's not normal that I really have to charge somewhere. It only happens when I'm taking a long trip. Uh, today would have been a good example for me if I'd driven an electric car up here from, I'm in Newport Beach. Um, I probably would have had to charge here at UCLA. And, or someplace around here, and I would have been happy to pay for that. I mean, it probably, probably couldn't have been a lot more than maybe the 10 or $15 it would have cost in gasoline to get up and back. So, um, you know, there, there's certainly that decision. Most households are gonna have a gasoline car. And, uh, you know, if I can charge for free or relatively reasonably, I'll take the electric car. If it's gonna be absurdly expensive, I'll just drive the gas car. Um, my, my own case is probably not the best. I might take the electric car anyway be, because I'm really into the technology. But, you know, um, for most people, it's just going to be a cost-benefit decision. I'll be the provocative one. Uh, this will offend a few of the people in the room, but I think this effort to monetize public charging is a bit premature. Uh, in large part because we don't have that many vehicles coming that quickly. So the notion of actually being able to make a profit on one of these things is probably a little sketchy for a while. But I think the answer is really what Paul said in the very beginning. I go to Rouse because there's a charger instead of Vons. You know, the, the public charging that is out there is not free because we were too stupid to figure out how to monetize it. It's free because the site owners generally didn't want to. What they told us was, we would rather have people coming into our stores and spending the money and getting the brownie points and now there are lead points and other benefits involved and we'll give you away the quarter's worth of electricity. It's really not about that for many of them. There will come a point, there will absolutely come a point when we'll need to monetize because the volume will outweigh what people want to give away for free. But thinking of monetizing just the charging itself instead of the customer relationship as a transaction is the wrong question. 
Uh, I'll add that I'm going to step out 10, 20 years into the future when there are millions of electric cars and people will need to charge out in the, in the open. Now, I'm personally willing to pay whatever the going rate for electricity is. If I have to charge at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a hot August day, I'm obviously willing to pay whatever that spot price is, and it will be expensive. Uh, I don't want to be subsidized for the use of my energy. I understand what it does to the environment to burn coal, to generate it. I also understand what it does to society to pump oil out of the ground and fight wars over it. Um, so I'm willing to pay whatever the cost is plus uh, a reasonable profit. Um, beyond that, you know, uh, like Mark, I'm going to weigh that against, you know, what I can get it for at home. Uh, and do I really need it out in the field? So you tend to plan when you drive an electric car. You, you tend not to just drive willy-nilly without looking at your gauge. You know, you, you see what you've got in your state of charge meter, and you act accordingly. Uh, but with, you know, uh, thousands of charge points out there, which we don't have today, you know, it's going to be a luxury in the future. And I, I, I think people are just going to, you know, uh, uh, they're, they're going to expect it to be free or very cheap initially, but understanding that when there are millions of electric cars out there, we, we will need to pay, and, and people should be willing to pay uh, the cost plus a little profit. Dean? Hi, uh, Dean Taylor, Southern California. I listen to one veteran to the others. I salute you all for, for your very willing to on and off. Oh, here it is yeah. again. Uh, to help solve process. Maybe we can give you one. <laughs> Thank you, Chelsea. Thank, Thank you, Chelsea. You. Uh, to help us work through the, uh, you know, the process. And I guess my question is, it has to go do with home charging. Um, you know, imagine you have an electric car, not easy, for, pretty easy for you all. Uh, but now, now imagine you have different charging level options. Like you could charge it at, uh, you know, let's say one kW or two kW or three kW or you know, or five or six. I mean, could you? I mean, how does that work? Do you really have to charge it? And have to have a two, three hour charging experience, or do you prefer having an overnight? I mean, are you okay with an eight hour charging experience? Because there, there is some you know, some differences as far as utility impacts and, and all kinds of things. Also on cost impacts. I mean, you may find you'd just be happy using your dryer circuit because it's 30 amps. You don't have to pay a bunch of money to upgrade it to 40 amps or, or higher. Or, you know, maybe you're just happy with, uh, you know, with just keeping it at, you know, a, a slower experience like 1.4 or, you know, or 2KW. So tell, I'd like to hear your thoughts on, so on that. I'm you know, I would, I would differentiate the home charging experience from public charging. For home charging, basically all I care is that I've got a, a full charge in the car when I need it, right? Um, the car is normally sitting for 10 hours at night. Um, I could charge it uh, one, 120 volt, you know, 15 amps probably isn't going to work. But, you know, I could charge it at maybe 3 kilowatts and be pretty happy maybe even less I, and, and it would it would charge overnight and I'd have a full charge in the morning um, at some point and I see I see this being built into some of the next generation of cars right you're going to be able to say I want it full at 6 a.m. and the car is going to talk to the charger and the ultimate world and, and it's going to work all that out or I can say I'm um, you know find me the best electric rate and you know interactively determine when to get the best rate based on electric rates those things will happen. I think, I think it's going to take us a lot longer to get there than we think it does. I think we're 15 years down the road, not five, to get there. Um, but the public charging experience in my mind is a little bit different. I've been living with a, you know, a six kilowatt public charging experience. Um, if I drive up to um, the valley from Orange County and back, that's 180 miles round trip. I've got four hours of charging in the middle. That's not bad if I'm going to be up there all day, but if I've got a two-hour meeting, that's, that means I've got two hours to chill my heels. Um, if we go to three kilowatts for public charging, that's really a problem. I'd actually like us to see that's moving closer to 10, but home, but home charging certainly lower is fine. As long as I have the option, you know, if I, if I pop into the house in between two long trips and I want to charge at a fast rate, if I have that option, normally I'm going to charge slower if I get a better rate. Yeah, I, I just want to say that I think we don't yet know um, what it's going to be like because we're being presented with different product than we had in the past. Um, I'm used to six kilowatt charging, um, so my car charges at 20% an hour. 
and I can kind of simply calculate what that's like uh, at home or in public. And it's absolutely, generally, not necessary at home. I really don't care if the car charges that rapidly at home or not. Um, if it, you know, to me, home is about overnight. And um, public charging is different. So the first generation of LEAF that has on it a 3.3 kilowatt charger that you cannot increase the rate of, that's where you're going to be set, whether you're doing it at home or in, in, in public. You know, the question is, what's the response going to be? Uh, among RAV drivers from the previous generation, I think there was an initial tremendous upset that the LEAF was going to have a 3.3 kilowatt charger. That meant it would charge in public and at home, but more importantly in public, twice as slowly as it otherwise would. And that seems a great inconvenience. I mean, yesterday, two days ago, I drove from San Francisco to Sacramento. It's 88 miles, drove directly there. And I go there for a full day of meetings. My car is charged long before I'm ready to come home. What will happen with a LEAF, I don't know. Um, but I think Nissan has found out that there are some people who don't think they're going to need a 220-volt charger at all, um, that they don't need something that charges that quickly, that perhaps 10 to 15 hours is fine, given how many miles they put on their car. And so people are saying, can I buy the car without the, the charger? And it's going to be a lot of different kinds of customers. How about if you had some choice on at home, if you could like have a little switch to say, <laughs> I, want, I, I didn't want to put in the bigger charger, I could you know, choose uh, instead of 40 amps, I could go down to 30 or maybe even 20. I, I think it would be useful, but I think people need to understand that. And I think we're not at the point of understanding that. And we're talking here simply about 120 volt, where we're really talking about 120 volt, 20 amp, and 240 volt. But with the 240 volt, we could be talking about uh, 15 amps or, or uh, 16 amps, 30 amps is what we kind of talk about, but, the, but it won't be delivered because the initial cars won't be able to take that much. Um, and so I think there's going to be a lot of confusion around what 240 volts means because it could span from Tesla's 70 amps to, to Nissan's uh, 16 amps. Uh, some education involved here. Yeah, I, I, I think I want, to, I want to reinforce that. I mean, we have been living with these cars for a long time and we have strong opinions of what we want and need. You know, we talk about when we talk to people who've never had an electric car, you know, range anxiety is one of those big things. They're worried that 100 miles isn't going to be enough. It's not something that someone who's had an electric car for five years even thinks about. It's so, so you got to get past that people making the decision about what they need before they get the car somehow because they really don't know what they need when they're making the purchase decision. And the best way to find out will, for, will be for there be, to be lots of cars. I mean, when you can talk to your neighbor and you can say, what's your experience and what would I like, then we'll know a lot more.